Hi, my name is Rich Burgess and I am the Deputy Director for the National Institute for Engineering Ethics. And today we're going to talk about ethics and robotics and how these can be incorporated into STEM education contexts such as project-based learning. Now when people think about robots and ethics, one of the things that they commonly think of are Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. Famously, the Three Laws said that a robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. The second law is that a robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And finally, the third law states that a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Now, while these laws were used in the context of short stories and fiction written by Asimov, they're actually very interesting and might actually find a place in the programming of robots as they become more sophisticated. However, we're not really going to focus on those today. What we're really, what we're really going to focus on is how to incorporate ethics into robotics PBLs. And what I want to draw attention to is that some of the questions and techniques that we're going to use to introduce ethics in a robotics PBL can be easily adapted to other PBL projects. One of the best ways to incorporate ethics in a PBL context in general is to consider and discuss applications of the project. So we will be looking at the use of robots in healthcare as an example of this. In general, one of the best ways to teach ethics is to use well-formulated questions. These do a great job of generating discussion among students and teachers and between students. And questions allow us to explore the various facets of technology. What I've developed are five questions that you can use in the robotics PBL uh, or again in other PBLs to get discussion going. The first question asks the following. What materials and resources will be needed to construct, operate, and maintain robots. And this can be broken down into subcategories. You might look at what materials are going to be used. Right? Are we going to use different kinds of plastics and metals, rare earth elements? And things that need to be taken into account are the durability of these materials, their cost, their accessibility, right? how common are these things and where are they found, and how sustainable and eventually disposable are these materials? And we'll get back to that last point further, on, further along in another question. It's also important to look at what resources are required to, in this case, build robots and operate and maintain them. Okay? Are they going to use rechargeable batteries? And is that going to put additional stress on the um, electrical uh, grid? Question number two who would use this technology? And again, this can be broken down into further, further categories. Does the choice of materials affect cost, which then in turn affects who could use the robots? If, for example, you develop a very expensive piece of equipment, this is going to constrain who can purchase and use that equipment. Who would use the robots? And how would, they be, how would the persons using it be impacted physically, emotionally, and financially? And we'll come back and address some of these specific questions when we look at healthcare, uh, excuse me, robots in a healthcare setting. The third question asks, besides the people using the technology, who else might be affected by it? It's not uncommon for there to be both people that are directly affected by a technology and those that are indirectly affected by it. For example, will people's, jo uh, people's jobs change in virtue of robots? And will this be a positive change or a negative change or some mix? What about the people that are living in the vicinity of factories responsible for building and constructing robots? Will they be impacted? If so, how? Question four, what else might be affected? So we've really focused on effects on human beings but there are effects that robots might have on the inanimate world, for example, on the urban environment. If we look in a healthcare setting, for example, then we would look at how robots, the presence of robots, would change how things work in a hospital or a nursing home or an assisted living facility. 
Will robots have any impact on the animals that we live with, our companion animals, dogs, cats, so on, animals out in the wild? Finally, the fifth question. What will we do with the robots once they're outdated or otherwise not being used anymore? This is a common challenge in technology. Many of us remember when cell phones started out in a bag or the, the brick cell phone, and we've since moved on. What do we do with all those old pieces of equipment? How will we store and or dispose of robots? Will we break them down and recycle certain components? Will we throw them away wholesale into, say, a landfill? <clears throat> Could and should we ship robots to countries that might use them, okay, that might benefit from them when we're no longer using them? Are there any issues that come up with that, any ethical challenges? As I've mentioned, a great way to get discussion going is to use questions. And this is a good way to get ethics discussions going in, in particular. In order to really facilitate ethical reasoning, which is one of the chief goals of ethics education, it's worthwhile to draw attention to potential sources of guidance. So, for example, you might ask your students uh, to consider the questions that I've just covered and then based on their responses, you could ask the students to, to state why they believe what they do. A lot of times, there's a general principle going on uh, and, and informing their view in the background. They believe, for example, it's important to be honest or that it's important to not do any damage to the environment or perhaps most importantly, not to um, cause any negative impacts on people. These are all general principles or can have general principles behind them. Specifically, you might also introduce engineering codes of ethics. Engineers are going to play a central role in the production and, and use of robots, and so it would be completely appropriate to seek out engineering codes of ethics, ethics and explore how they apply to the use of robotics. These codes of ethics can be searched online using the engineering society's uh, websites. So, for example, you might look at the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME, their code of ethics. You might look at the code of ethics for electrical engineers, which is the engineering society as IEEE. Now let's turn and look at the use of robots in healthcare specifically. Not surprisingly, the use of robots in healthcare will raise ethical issues. One way to start this discussion off and to, is to think about the different roles that robots in healthcare might be used to, to, to play. The first is robots might simply be used to help uh, lift patients or otherwise help them ambulate. And this could really potentially decrease uh, injury for both patients and the healthcare workers responsible for providing care. For example, back injuries are very common among nurses' aides. If we use robots in this setting to help lift patients or otherwise move them around, this could lead to a decrease in those kinds of debilitating back injuries. Robots might also be used to dispense medication. This could free up nurse and other staff to address some of the higher order needs that patients have. Or in a home setting, a robot could remind a, an otherwise forgetful patient which medicine to take at what times. And this could be a real benefit to, to the patient. Finally, and it's not far-fetched to think about this, we might even think about the use of robots as companions to keep some patients that are more isolated company. So let's go back and consider some questions related to these possible roles. Who's affected by the use of robots in healthcare, directly and indirectly? Well, certainly anyone receiving care from a robot, say a patient, is going to be directly affected. Okay. If we go back to the example of the robot as a, a, a medication dispenser, on one hand, this could benefit the patient to help them remember what they need to take and when. On the other hand, if there's a glitch in the software that that robot utilizes, the consequences could be disastrous and even deadly. Healthcare workers also can be directly and even indirectly affected by the use of robots. Again, if we have robots that are helping lift patients and helping them ambulate, this can decrease in incidences of injury. On the other hand, this could make certain jobs obsolete and people could, as a result, um, lose their employment. 
Robots are going to indirectly affect administrators. Even if they're not receiving care, how they use robots to deliver care to patients and to an extent family is going to impact things like uh, financial considerations, staffing considerations, and so on. And finally, family members will be affected by the use of robots in healthcare. Again, will healthcare workers lose their jobs in light of using robots? In the automotive industry, as, it became, as the production of automobiles became more automated, a number of workers were rightfully concerned about losing their jobs. Family members might find that they have more freedom uh, because they're not having to deal with some of the details of, of patient care like uh, dispensing medication. But again, this also has a potential downside because it potentially isolates patients from their family members or family members from their patients. And again, it's interesting to think about the use of robots as companions. In an article titled, Robot Caregivers, Harbingers of Expanded Freedom for All, Jason Bornstein and Yvette Pearson uh, pub published and considered some of the different ways that robots might be used. And they quote, they state, the presence of certain kinds of robots may ease depression caused by loneliness. Even if robots do not provide genuine friendship, they can mitigate feelings of isolation. Bornstein and Pearson talk about a study that was conducted using both a real dog and a robotic dog in a long-term care setting. What they found was that patients' care and outlook and quality of life improved, but that there wasn't really a statistical difference between the use of the real dog and the robot dog. So in other words, patients reacted about the same, had similar improvements to both the robot and the animal. So this notion that at some point robots could provide companionship and improve our quality of life at a deeper level is not that far-fetched. In the article, they also explore the possibility of robots being used to care for severely autistic children. And again, we would look at how this would change the, the interaction between parent, the parent of the autistic child and the, and the child themselves. So there's a number of questions and complexities that come up from using robots just in healthcare. Of course, other applications of robots currently include using robots in, in the military, whether to say defuse bombs or in uh, drones. The important point here is that incorporating ethics is best done in a robotics PBL by thinking about applications of those robots and the questions that those applications raise. Thank you.